all the young dudes by Miss King be nighting on chapter 71, fourth year, June. Saturday, 28th June, 1975. Hiya, Remus, Lily styled him as he was leaving the hospital wing. He had just had his final checkup with Madame Pomfrey before school ended. Hello, he said, nervously. What are you doing here? Dropping these jars off with Professor Slugorn, she raised a large jar of something that looked like purple frog spawn. We've been doing healing potions in Slug Club this term. Wait here, I'll walk back with you. She disappeared inside the infirmary, and he waited, trying not to look too suspicious. He hated being seen near the hospital. Lily finally came out with a breezy smile. Thanks. What were you doing in there? Oh, nothing. I, um... I ex that went wrong. Oh, gosh. What happened? Eh, uh, I'd rather not say. He raised an eyebrow, suggestively, hoping that she would get the picture. Fortunately, her mind went elsewhere. Was it Potter again? Oh, he ex several last week of something that made his neck swell up like a life ring. Oh, yeah. James is good at engorgement charms, Remus grinned. Well, I wouldn't have thought he'd ask the people who are supposedly his friends, Lily replied, primly. It wasn't him, Remus replied, annoyed. He was keen not to badmouth James in front of Lily after the mix-up back in January. Black, then, Lily shrugged. He's just as bad. No idea where everyone fancies him. Mm. So, big plans for the summer, Lily changed tact perhaps realising that Remus didn't particularly enjoy a tie rate on the other marauders. Nah, Remus shook his head. Usual stuff, probably. Homework. You? I'm going to visit Marlene in July. We're trying to get Mary to come. How is she? Mary had been absent from every meal since the big breakup, and had barely left the girls' dorm as far as Remus can tell. Better, Lily nodded, sadly. She can go a few hours without crying anyway. Keeps playing depressing Dusty Springfield albums, though. They breached the portrait of the fat lady and bumped into Peter, and Desdemona Lewis, of course. They were in a tight embrace, arms wrapped around each other, murmuring between kisses. I'll miss you, she sighed. I'll miss you more, Peter said. Were you right? Every day. Remus made loud, retching noises, which made Lily giggle, but earned a furious frown from Peter. They quickly climbed through the portrait and left the lovebirds to it. Gryffindor Tower was complete anarchy when they reached it, as was usual on the last day of turn. Students crawled under the tables looking for lost things, ran around collecting up cards and game pieces. Shouts of, Akio left trainer, or Akio wristwatch, rang out as everyone scrambled to pack at the very last minute. Remus couldn't help but wonder whether every common room was undergoing the same pandemonium. Surely the organised Ravenclaws were in a much better state. Sirius and James were not doing much to help the process. They were covertly levitating various items behind one of the large armchairs, snickering to each other happily. Remus smiled, thinking again how much he would miss everything. You two! Lily scolded them, marching over, holding her own wand up. Sirius laughed and ducked behind James. Come on, Evans, just a bit of last day our spirits. Why can't you just leave people be, Black? Why can't you just leave us be? he retorted. Fire and green sparks had seen him from behind James's back. You're not a prefect yet, you know. Oh, just wait till I am, she said, trying to throw a jinx at Sirius. Hit at James instead, and turnips immediately sprung from his ears, the shocked expression on his face so chemical that Remus collapsed into giggles. Well, that was a very goody-goody, Sirius laughed, transfiguring a nearby lamp into a flock of birds which fluttered screeching around the room, adding to the chaos. Lily's next move was to shoot a jelly leg jinx at James, causing him to fall on the floor in a heap, still clutching his turnip bees. With him out of the way, and Sirius exposed, Lily disabled him with a binding spell, then turned to Remus. Help me sort this all out, will you? Oh, okay, fine, Remus sighed, still wiping tears of laughter away from his eyes. Together, they managed to restore the common room to order, detransfigure the lamp, repair the cinch marks on the ceiling, and calm down a well in first year who had lost a cat. Lily left Remus to handle James and Sirius, who were in a real state now. Isn't she marvellous? James grinned, dopely, as Remus tried to help him into a nearby chair, his legs still unsteady, folding underneath him. Yeah, a real charmer, Sirius grumbled, struggling to get free from his body bind. You two are just lucky she only uses the power for good, Remus chastened them. 
It'll be no match for her if she decided to start really breaking the rules. Anita. The pointer just wanted Sirius. It was finally released. He rubbed his arms fiercely. Can't believe you helped him, Mooney. Of course I did, Remus shrugged. I'm terrified of her. Sunday, 29th of June, 1975. Oi, you two. We'll miss the train, Remus huffed, climbing the stairs to their dorm for what felt like the hundredth time since that morning. Their trunks had already been transported down to Augsmaid Station by some magical mechanism, and McGonagall had given them a ten-minute warning. James and Sirius had vanished again. He found them sitting on James's bed, which was stripped of bedclothes. Ed's bowed over something small Sirius was holding cooked in his hands. The room felt horribly hollow and empty without all the marauders things in it. The two black-haired boys turned towards him as he entered, and Remus had felt he had intruded on something very private. He hung back a moment, awkwardly. Sorry, Mooney. James smiled, climbing off the bed. We're ready. Air black? Yeah, of course. Sirius got up too. He had a dazed, distracted expression which made Remus ache on the inside. Look what James gave me, Sirius said, as he crossed the room. He held out something round and silver. Remus took it. It was warm from Sirius's hands. It was a compact mirror, beautifully etched with an ornate filigree-style design. Uh. Remus turned it over, snapped it open. Very, um, pretty, James laughed. It's magic. Belongs to my granddad. Look. He opened his own, identical compact, and looked into it. Remus looked down at Sirius's mirror and was amazed to see James's bespectacled face grinning back at him. So he can keep in touch over the summer. Oh my god, Remus exclaimed. That's amazing. I know, James nodded closing his compact and slipping it back into his pocket. Wish I could have got them for all of us, but they're old family heirlooms. There's only two. Oh, of course, Remus handed the corresponding case back to Sirius. There was an awkward few seconds of silence before Remus cleared his throat. Come on, McGonagall's going to ex us into next week if we miss the carriages. They did make the carriages, and the train in time, and piled into their usual compartment. Remus was most disconcerted to find that this year, their little carriage space was packed full of people. Not only the former orders, but of course Desdemona was invited to join them. Remus had still not heard her say more than two words, possibly because her lips were so often occupied. Mary joined them too, at Sirius's request. He had been paying her a good deal of attention over the past few days. It was obvious that she was rather enjoying it, having recently taken heavy knock to her confidence. With Mary, as always, was Marlene, and finally Lily, who would have been forced to sit alone otherwise. As such, it was an incredibly noisy ride back to London. Between Sirius trying to impress Mary by singing every Beatles song he knew, James switching between trying to attract Lily's attention into a quidditch tactics with Marlene, and Peter and Desdemona's fevered fumblance, Remus simply sat back against the window and enjoyed being among friends for what might be the last time in a very long time. He tried not to think about the war, or who might go missing over the summer. He tried not to think about Sirius, alone and abused in a cold London mansion. He tried not to think about Ferrox, off on dangerous missions for Dumbledore. He just watched his friends, their faces bright and animated, full of excitement and emotion. He rubbed the back of his head, sleepily. His skin had cut had grown out, and he had a pile of mousy brown curls now. He might not cut it again. He wouldn't let Matron do it, he decided. It was better longer, softer didn't want to look hard and mean anymore. He didn't feel like he needed to. Smiling to himself, Remus drifted to sleep. Fourth year. Epilogue. Some hours later. Remus dragged his trunk from the bus and down the long road to St Edmunds all by himself. It was the first year Matron had met him at King's Cross. She'd sent him the bus for ahead of time and told him he was old enough now to make the journey alone. Perhaps she hoped he wouldn't come back at all. But where else would he go? He entered the cold grey building with a sense of resignation, signed himself in at the front desk and made his way to his dorm. It was a bright warm day and he could hear most of the other boys shouting outside. He was hot and sticky and opened for a shower and a few quiet hours alone in which he could unpack and maybe get started on a summer reading. But as he entered the dorm room, he found that he was not entirely alone. There was a boy sitting on the bed adjacent to his. He must have been new. Reams didn't recognise him from last year. He looked about 15 or 16 and wore a light blue vest top with an orange pipe and in long flared denim jeans. His socks didn't match. 
His hair was blonde and curly, his face sunny and snub-nosed. He had a casual, friendly air. Oh, hello, Uma said quietly, dragging his trunk over to his bed. All right, the other boy greeted him. He had a chipped front tooth and a lopsided grin that made Remus want to smile back at him. His hair was longish and fell to his eyes. You're the kid what goes to the fancy school, are you? Are you? Name's Grant. Remus nodded politely. Remus, nice to meet you. Blimey, Grant cracked an even wider smile now. They said you was posh. Want me to bow to you, my lord? Remus returned a soft smile. Unable to help himself. The other boy wasn't being rude or nasty. He'd forgotten how much his accent had changed after four years at Hogwarts. Big reader, are you? Grant nodded at the books Remus was unpacking. I get a lot of homework, Remus said. Then he decided to relax a bit. And yeah, I like reading. Cool, Grant replied. He lay back on his bed, arms behind his head, his long body stretched out, shit rising up to expose the strip of skin just above his hips. Remus glanced at him sideways as he unpacked, trying not to look too much like he was looking. So, Grant was saying, what sort of music do you like? 